Hello everyone, what's up? So today's video, I thought I should continue on with the Tarantula Mythbuster videos. So this is episode 22. As you know, on even numbers, I do tend to do the New World species. So by popular demand, I'm going to be doing one of the more common New World species available out there. It is called the Nandu species. So I'm going to be covering the four that are available in the hobby. There's a fifth one, I really don't know what the name of it is. Um, it's not currently available yet, but hopefully it will be soon. So this video will cover all the four. The Caraponensis, the Chromatis, Colorado Velosis, and the Tripepi. So that way you'll have an understanding of what they look like, what they are, uh, what to do with it, how to care for it, and how to breed it. Sweet. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here are the plethora of common names for these four species. So the Brazilian Red describes the Nandu Carapanensis. The Brazilian Black and White is one common name that is described to be the Nandu Colorado Velosis. Uh, the Nandu Tripepi has two common names, either Giant Strawberry Blonde Bird Eater or Giant Brazilian Blonde. Why the Giant? Because the it is the largest member of the genus, as you'll soon see how, how big they actually do get. Now the N. Kermatis has three different common names in Europe and in the US and Canada. Some of them label them as Brazilian Red and White some as red zebra and other ones like myself tend to use the white stripe bird eater here are the latin names nandu colorado velosis which describes the black and white since the age is silent we just call it nandu so it's a pretty really easy genus name to figure out here is the caraponensis the Brazilian red. It comes from Paraguay and Brazil. Colorado Velocis is Brazil, obviously. Now this one here, the Nandu Tripepi. Formerly Nandu Velpinis describes the bl giant blonde bird eater. So you have to keep in mind now that the name has changed. So this is the new name, Nandu Tripepi. If you still see uh, Nandu Valpini sold in online dealers, they haven't changed the labels yet. Uh, they are the exact same species, so um, just to make you aware of this. Now, the Nandu Chromatis has undergone a plethora of Latin names and obviously different genera and different species. So, uh, back in the day, I think in the early 2000s, they used to sold it as two different genuses, genera, sorry. Yeah, okay, so they would either sell it as, they used to sell it, now, thank goodness, not anymore, uh, as a Lassiodora, uh, Christatus, Christatus, I think that's how you spell it, Christatus, yeah, and then, they found out later, you know, the Chromatis really isn't a non-do uh, Lassiodora species, so let's inherit it a Vitalius species, Vitalius Cristatus. So now it's been changed to the non-do Chromatis, which hopefully stays like that. Okay, now for the availability and costs, uh, you will find it readily available on online dealers. Uh, Never have I seen Nandus being offered in pet stores, at least the ones that I've been to. So, uh, cost of them, okay, so the Chromatis seems to be the cheapest one. Uh, quarter inch slings could go for as little as 5 to $15, maybe cheaper. Uh, the Tripepi and the Colorado Velosis half inches will go for around uh, let's see, half inches, 25, and so will be the end tripepi. The Caraponensis is probably the more expensive of the four. Uh, I've seen probably half inch slings, maybe for 25, maybe 40 bucks, depending on the, the dealers. Uh, I really don't never seen the Caraponensis available for quite some time in the hobby. 
at least in Canada, I've been looking everywhere for the specimen. I can't really find it, either on arachnid boards, on Transla Canada's price list, and on Davery, David Avery's exotics. Uh, okay, so now for mature specimens. Um, uh, I got mine uh, at the expo for the Colorado Velosis for around $85 for around a 3 inch female, so that seems to be pretty average for one. Uh, the Chromatis tends to go at least between 125 to 175. Uh, the Carapanensis likely around the same price range, but maybe 150 to 175. And for the Tripepi, uh, pretty much the same as the Chromatis. Okay, now about the size, the mature females, the males, the lifespan, and their growth rate. Okay, so the growth rate, it's not the fastest growing bird eater compared to, you know, like the Lassiodoras, the Pamphibedias, and the Therifosa, but I would say uh, in about two years, if, you, if your specimen's a male, he will be mature by then. If it's a female, it will probably take around a good... Uh, three to five years I would say uh, specimens here like you can compare um, Darius I got this one uh, I think it was last year as an inch and a half specimen and it's about two and a half so in a year it really didn't grow very much and this one right here uh, if you remember Nadia I got this at the the expo back in March 2010. Sadly, there's no expo this year. At least for this time, it's been relocated to May. The first week of May. So uh, that's what a he she looks like. This is a female, three inches. Uh, used to be around an inch and a half. So it doubled its size about in a year's time. So I guess that's pretty fast growing if you come to think of it that way. Now the males and the females obviously are almost alike but as always you know you'd expect the male to be s smaller bodied uh, long-legged uh, this species does have chibble hooks and bubbles pedipalps on their feelers uh, mature females obviously are much more larger body they're short-legged and they have much bigger abdomens so now about their sizes they have a respectable size so the chromatis the Carapanensis and the Colorado Velosis generally have a 5 to 6 inch leg span. The most notable largest of the members is the Nandu Tripepi that can attain a 7 to 8 inch leg span. So it's one of the largest species out there. So let's go have a look at this picture, shall we? So here is Trancha Canada's price list. Well, no, the gallery list of all the Nandus. So I'll show you the Nandu Tripepi. That's what it looks like. Not the most colorful one, but then again, it's the most underrated in the hobby. It has a lot of pink hairs and has this nice blonde appearance to them. So this is the one that gets up to 7 to 8 inches. And you have the mature male right here. If you remember, Jean. Uh, who's still at Tarantula Canada. That's my mature male that I parted off with. We're still waiting for a successful insertion. I really haven't seen one or any heard from news from Amanda about that. And that's what a male looks like. I don't think this is my specimen. If it is, it would be really cool. Uh, this is a collateral Velosis. I have the same one, Mina, who's a four and a half inch female. Almost full grown. And then the mature males, they look exactly identical, except they're more longer legged. You'll, you can see the bulbous pedipalps right over here. And you can probably see the hooks right over here too. Uh, chromatis, mature male. And again, it's pretty uh, obvious to see what a male looks like. Smaller body, longer legged. Mature female. This one has two very, color, very different color forms. Uh, there's one with the dark carapace color form, which is the one you see right here. And if you want to compare my specimen, who has the light color form. Then again, it could mean that it, 
Could mean that an adult one has that, but I really can't say for sure. So I guess why they call it the Brazilian red zebra, because of the red abdomen and of course the zebra-like patterns, very similar to the ones you'll see on Ephelopus moranus and on Phonopama simani. And the Carapinensis female, uh, which we're not really unsure of, there's a debate whether or not to put this in the Canthoscuria genus, uh, but uh, that's where it is. And I guess that's why they call it Brazilian red, because of the distinct red hairs around the whole body they highlighted. So you can see it's a really nice species. I really hope to get one, one of these days. Okay, so now for the enclosure setup. Um, you know, as slings, you tend to go for the uh, pill jars, like you see right here, um, with air holes. Then you upgrade ones to <coughs> deli containers, as you see here for my Entri Peppy, Darius. And then for adults, they're perfectly good in Critter Keepers by Funarium or by Crabworks. This is the Crabworks variety. The Fenarium, of course, is the larger ones right here, so it would be perfect for like a female, um, well, any mature female uh, Nandu species. Uh, let's see what else I can describe to you. Oh, yeah, it's true. I haven't shown you my specimen. At least for my color of Velosis, uh, who's hiding. Okay, so let's have a look at her and see how well she is. I really don't want to take out the specimen or try to move it for you guys uh, because I really react badly to these particular hairs so um, sorry if I don't show you too much of the specimen so that's what she looks like uh, it's hard to see but you have a good idea of what she looks like let's see one more time I can try to do it. And yeah, there she is. Nice. Okay, so that's the enclosure setup. So you just keep it terrestrial, um, give it eco worth, a cave, and a water dish. Except for an adult, and then for slings, you just keep it like this. It'll be fine until it becomes like three or so inches bigger, then offer a water dish and uh, whatnot. Okay, so now for the care sheet video, um, they're pretty similar to in care sheet of the last Eudora species. So you want to keep them around 80% humidity. Just just keep it the substrate like slightly moist, but not overly wet. I would say like misting once or twice a week would be sufficient, and then keep it waterish at all times. Uh, temperature, humidity, 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit is just perfect for one. Uh, it's a very hardy species that does well in captivity. Uh, temperament, I really don't suggest handling this species um, because one, they have really bad urticating hair. Uh, I was rather not to contemplate putting this video or not. Uh, I did record an old video of uh, how badly I react to, especially the non Colorado Velosis hairs. Uh, when I was picking up one of her molts, I really got haired badly by her and she left me with a couple of I broke out literally in red like all over my body so <laughs> it was really fun and I had to take a shower just to get rid of all the hairs off uh, so yeah they sting like crazy these hairs especially the Colorado Velosis hairs I really didn't get hair too much by my tripepi or my Kermatis but from from experience the Colorado Velosis tends to have the worst uh, urticating hairs in my opinion but for temperament, they're generally semi-aggressive, so I'll give you a demonstration of what I mean by semi-aggressive, um, semi-defensive rather. So these species are very territorial, especially the Chromatis, the Trapepi, and the uh, Carapinensis probably. I really didn't have enough of experience to work with it, but you can see they, ha they do like to throw a fake threat at this place. And you'll see, hang on. Just do the paintbrush technique. There we go. That's usually your typical uh, position of your end chromatis. They like to do what is called thre fake threat displays. Well, they just won't. They may slap 
to try to ward you off, but uh, they're not really likely to bite, but you know, you can never be too sure. There's one video that I saw on Emilian Wart's channel about the unpredictability of the of any tarantula. So she had a beast smithy that reacted very great one minute and then react super defensively on the next minute. So I'll I'll post the video on the video description so for you to have a look at it and see how well that really captures the true unpredictability of the uh, teas any species regardless if it's a really docile specimen or it's a really aggressive specimen okay so now for breeding breeding is semi difficult uh, just because of the females aggression towards the male if the female is really not well fed enough and uh, we have very difficult problems mating my and try it peppy with Tarantula Canada's female because the female really doesn't want to do anything with the male even though that the male is more than willing to actually go ahead with it but yeah so that's it so if you do get up to mating around one to three good pairings in a couple of months probably like four or five months from now you'll get a nice egg sac uh, some of them can now go up to at least from a thousand up to 1500 and some even record to get as much as 1940 slings wow so it's almost as good egg sac as a l power hibana so it's good if you breed these specimens sell for cheap and you can make a lot of money for that and chromatis happens to be one of the more hot sellers uh, because of their beautiful appearance as, as i showed you so for the recommendations, I recommend this tarantula for, um, I would say the intermediate owners. Uh, if you want, if you own a rose hair and you want to tackle something a little bit more aggressive than B. Smithy, uh, G. Rosea, the Avic Avic, and particularly all those new worlds that I recommend for beginners in my tea recommendation series videos, uh, it's a great tea to own. You know, it's not the, it's not a terribly fast grower, but I'll tell you, these guys have voracious appetites. Uh, they're very nice to look at. Uh, they're iconic. They're very nice looking species in my opinion, especially the Chromatis and the Colorado Velosus. And you know, given the Tripepi too, just because they're very much underrated, but happen to be one of the largest of the genera. But Honestly, it's a recommendation that I recommend. So it's a nice species, it's a must-have, and no collection is complete without at least one or two Nandu. So thanks everyone for watching this Mythbuster video. Hope you enjoyed it. And for the next one, I did contemplate on doing the Peace Smithy, but I'm going to be changing my mind. You know, since rather doing separate videos on the Pokies, and they pretty much care well, the pretty much care sheets video is all going to be the same. It's just the only difference is that the name is going to be changing. Uh, so what I'm going to propose to do, rather than make so many Mythbusters for videos on the different Pokies, I'm going to give one huge video on all of the Pokies. What you need to look for, how to differentiate the two. Uh, no, the 12. Yeah, I think yeah, there's 12 or more than them. Um, what to look for, how to care for specific ones like the piece of Fusca, lowland and the highland require slightly lower temperatures as well as the Rufalata. And uh, yeah, that'll be really great. And you'll probably get more out of that video than just one separate video on just all the pokies. And you'll just see me repeat all the same stuff again. So I hope you enjoy this video, guys. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another one and a feeding video.